One of the things that uh, 20 years in spe teaching special education taught me is to be flexible. I was supposed to have grabbed a nail out of this box and I grabbed a screw instead. So what you saw up there wasn't anything like I was going to do. Thank you, Jesus, for helping me with that one. Let's stand together as we look into God's Word together. I'm going to just uh, read a few uh, verses from God's Word. And this morning I'll be reading from 2 Samuel chapter 22, verses 31 to 37. 2 Samuel 22, verses 31 through 37. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord, and who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He causes me to stand on new heights. He trains my hands for battle, and my arms can bend the bow of the, a bow of bronze. You make your saving help my shield. Your help has made me great. You provide a broad path for my feet so that my ankles do not give way. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, as we come to this time of the service, and as we look into your word, I ask that the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth would be pleasing and satisfying to you and encouragement to us as we go into this world around us. And I pray these things in your name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I'm going to start out this morning by asking you all a question. And that question is this. Have you ever been so focused on a problem that you completely overlooked an easy solution? You were so focused on what you were trying to accomplish that you couldn't figure out how to satisfy that, and all of a sudden it was just the solution came. If you're like me, that happens a lot, where I'll try to figure out how I'm going to solve something, how I'm going to be able to get through this. One of the things I'm appreciative of of my lovely bride is I, I, can't, I talked with her last night about this, and, and I said, so I said, can you think of a time when either you or I had a problem to solve and we talked to the other one, and all of a sudden we came to one of those, well, duh, times. You know what I mean. The times where you think, oh, why didn't we see this? You know, I mean, I consider Trish and I to be, you know, fairly intelligent people. We're both professionals. We're both college educated. She's smarter than me, but we're still not so bad. And at times you just kind of overlook what's so obvious. Have you ever had that situation or is it just me? You can signify by raising hands if you're brave. Okay, good. I'm not alone then. So it's just about us today, folks. Just about us. Now, I remember my daughter when she was about three years old. We were getting ready to go somewhere during the winter, and uh, we gave her, or we were going to put her jacket on her because it was cold outside. And you know how three-year-olds are. They, they kind of think that they know everything already. And so she took the coat, and she said, me do it. All right, she put it on before, so we gave it to her. And somehow when we handed it to her, she ended up turning it upside down. And she was trying to put the coat on, but it wasn't working the way it always worked before. Something was wrong, and she just couldn't figure it out. And she got really, really upset, so we tried to explain to her to turn the coat over because it's upside down. And then she got mad at us. You don't want a three-year-old mad at you. And she just insisted on trying to do it her way, and it didn't work. And finally, she got frustrated, and she gave up, and we took the coat and we turned it the right way, and you know what happened? It worked. She was able to put the coat on, but she was so frustrated with the problem that she didn't see the solution. You know, the disciples had that problem, too, in several situations. One that I can think of in particular is a story that we all are, remember from Mark chapter 4. Remember, Jesus had been teaching all day, and he had talked to the disciples, and he said, let's get in a boat, we're going to go to the other side, and we're just going to get away from the crowds. And so they got in the boat, and if you remember the story, they got out into the sea, and a horrible storm came up. And it started throwing the boat from side to side. It started to, water started to come over the gun walls. It said that the boat was almost swamped. And the disciples were, were terrified. And finally they turned around, the Bible says they turned around, and there was Jesus sleeping in the back of the boat. 
Now, let me tell you something about the Bible. First of all, the Bible is true in everything that it says. No doubt about that. But I think sometimes, especially in the Gospels, the disciples leave out some details because they don't figure either they don't figure it's important for us or they don't really want to know what it's like, what was really going on. Because you know, guys, as well as I do, when that storm came up and the waves started coming over the boat and everything was starting to go wrong, what do you think the guys did? Do you think they immediately looked and asked Jesus for help? You know we didn't, right, guys? Because we did what we tend to want to do. We tend to want to solve problems. And so I've got a feeling that before they called on Jesus, they were having a discussion, maybe an argument, on how they could best solve the problem. They started to row harder. They complained about, you know, you're not carrying your weight. You're not carrying your weight. We've got to get this done. And I love Peter dearly, but I got a feeling that he was probably the one that finally turned around in complete frustration. And there's Jesus sleeping in the back of the boat while the rest of them are trying to save their lives. There he is sleeping. And I think it was Peter that finally went back to him and said, Jesus, don't you care that we're going to die? Do you see what's going on? Do you see the boat breaking apart? Don't you care that we're going to die? And I got a feeling, by the way, this is Mike Fisk paraphrase from you from faith. Us Zion people expect this of me, I think. Finally, the disciples, um, Jesus woke up and I got a feeling it might have gone something like this, maybe, where, where Peter says, Lord, don't you see we're going to die? We're, the, the boat is breaking up. We're going to drown. Don't you care? And Jesus looked at Peter and he said, Peter, where did I tell you we were going to go? Well, you said we were going to go to the other side, but do you hear the wind? Do you hear the boards breaking on the boat? Don't you hear that, Jesus? Peter, where did I say we would go? You said we'd go to the other side, but do you see the waves? Do you see the water in the boat? Do you realize that we're in the process of going down? Don't you care? Peter, where did I say we'd go? Well, you said we'd go to the other side, but we have been rowing. We've been doing everything that we possibly could. Peter, yes, Lord, watch this. And Jesus stood up, said, peace be still. Everything stopped. And I got a feeling Peter went, whoa, that's amazing. And then the disciples said, who is this guy that can even do that? This was after watching Jesus heal people. This is after watching Jesus uh, do many miracles and they still hadn't gotten it. You know, I think sometimes in life we get so focused on the problem that we fail to see the solution. We get so focused on what's going on in our life that we fail to see who's in the back of the boat. And we try to do everything else that we can to try to solve our problems, to try to take care of things our way, without looking in the back of the boat and remembering who's really back there. The first verse that I read from our passage this morning says, As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. Focusing on the problem, or focus on the solution, not on the problem. If you forget everything else that I said this morning, that's the key. Focus on the solution, not on the problem. The psalmist says God's way, God's ways are perfect. That means that his ways are faultless. God's plan for you is faultless. Now, you might look at that. Nasty horsefly. You might look at that and think, well, that's not exactly true because I'm going through all kinds of stuff. I'm going through all kinds of turmoil. You see, God's ways may not be the way we would like, but they're always the ways that are best for us. Sometimes we go through struggles. Sometimes we go through trials. Sometimes we not like the plan that he has for us. But when we realize who God is, his plan is always right. His plan is always for us. His plan is perfect for us. So what I want you to remember about God's plan is to focus on what God's plan is for you. And to do that, what you need to do is you need to think about the promises that he's given you. The promise of forgiveness if you, if you mess up. Sometimes we think God's plan is bad because we've made some wrong choices. I remember getting a phone call from a woman one time that said that, and she said that uh, their, their, her daughter had gotten arrested and she was in turmoil because this shouldn't have happened. Why is God doing this to them? It turns out that her daughter had broken the law. 
and she got arrested for it. And the lady said, I don't know why God is doing this to us. Well, God wasn't doing anything to you. You're suffering consequences of your situation. See, God's plan doesn't say that he'll take us away from the consequences, but what he does say is that he'll forgive us and he'll help us through the consequences of whatever we've done. That's his plan for us. So focus on God's plan, not on what you're going through. Like the disciples, the storm wasn't fun. The storm was scary. The boat was breaking apart. They were without hope. But where did Jesus say they were going? They were going to the other side. What Jesus did not say is, hey, guys, we're going to get in the boat and we're going to give this a shot. Let's see if we can get across there. He didn't say, hey, guys, guess what? We're going to get in the boat and we're going to get halfway across. The boat's going to break up and we're all going to drown. That sounds like fun. Let's go. What he said is, you're going to go to the other side. The second thing that these verses tell me is that his word is is flawless. God's word gives us instruction. Now, God doesn't tell us instructions on details, but he tells us instructions on priorities. He tells us that we can be forgiven. He tells us that whatever we're going through, he'll offer us the guidance that we need. And so sometimes I think we need to focus on God's word and what he says about us and not focus on the consequences we're going through. That's what he's talking about. The last thing is, this verse says, is that God is, offers a fortress, a refuge to all those who take refuge, or a refuge, he, offer, he shields those who take refuge in him. God is our fortress. He's the one that we can rely on. He's the one that we can take hope in. You see, fortresses do two things for us. And I've mentioned this before, but just a reminder. A fortress protects us from our enemy. If you read in Old Testament times, you'll you'll read about cities that were besieged, meaning the army came around them and the the city would be under, under siege and people couldn't come in and they couldn't go out. But if the city was a healthy city that had ample supplies of food, they could wait out the siege until reinforcements came. So the fortress protected them from the enemy, but it also provided for them what they need. Our God is our fortress. Our God protects us, but he provides for us. And I think sometimes we need to focus on his power and not on the strength of the enemy. Have you looked around the world? Have you seen and does it seem sometimes like we as believers in Jesus Christ are in the minority and like we're going to lose the battle? We're not. We need to focus on the fact that God is our fortress. God is the one that will for, for, will protect us. God is the one that will provide for us. And if the things that we're going through, the storms that we're enduring, are a result of our own our own uh, bad choices, our own sin, He'll help us through that anyway. He'll forgive us, and He'll help us through the struggles. Focus on the solution not on the problem. Focus on who's in the back of the boat, not on where you're going or how you're going to get there. He's promised you that he'll see you through and he can calm the storm in our lives. You know, the, the, uh, the, another verse um, from this passage, is 2 Samuel twenty two thirty seven says, you provide a broad path for my feet so my ankles do not give away. If you've ever been on a walk or if you're in athletics or sports or whatever and uh, or running or just walking through a field or something and you step on a, in a hole and you twist your ankle and how much that hurts. A path that God sets for us, the Bible says, is a path that's broad. A broad path means that it's opened. It's been, it's been cleared of all the debris. And he causes us to be able to go in such a way that we don't twist our ankle. And the picture I think that paints for us is just the fact that God will see you through. Whatever you're going through this morning, whatever struggle there is, I don't know what the solution is, but I do know who the solution is. And he can give us the peace that we need in whatever storm that we're enduring. That's the the message that we have from our Father. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity we have to come and worship you this morning. 
Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters that are here this morning and for whatever storms that they may be going through, whatever struggles uh, they're having, whatever problems that are they're facing. And I just ask, Father God, that you would open their hearts and their minds to what you have for them. Help each of us to remember to focus on the solution and not on the problem, to remember who's in the back of the boat, to remember who will guide us through, to remember your promises, to remember that your plan for us is perfect. And I pray these things in your name. Amen.